Welcome to Passion Time. I'm Patricia Gross here with Joan Ifman. She's an academic. Uh, she specializes in this topic of food addiction. She's also an entrepreneur. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Patty. And you're going to tell us a little bit about, first of all, you know, what did you have to do to learn to live your passion? Well, I, of course, I felt like I was let out of a, a nightmare. <laughs> Processed foods had me sick. I was depressed, anxious, irritable and overweight and trying, 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 trying so hard. And then finally I got this idea that it was just processed foods. And then once I got them out of my diet, my goodness, it was like- You became another person. A whole new life. Because you, you, yeah. you know, you, you, I, when I met you, you had an MBA from Stanford and you were not doing anything like this. And then all of a sudden, but you were feeling awful. And that's how you discovered this. Yes. And you were overweight. Yes. And I had constant sinus infections and I had fatigue. But what I really valued out of the transformation was the release from irritability. Because I had a, a, you were an not 11, a nice person. Well, no. And I had an 11 and 12 year old girls. Right. Whom, I, of course, I loved. But then these words would come out of my mouth that I just. You were just would, mean. I was mean. <laughs> I was critical. And I would yell, and I would rage, and then I would just pretend like it didn't happen. Crazy. Crazy. So being able to stabilize from that, I now know that, that I was awash, if you will. My brain was awash in neurotransmitters and then deficits. Right. So the high and the crash. Uh -huh. And uh, just having a stable brain. Fantastic. Well, let's talk about, you know, one, other, one action. What, if you had to pick one action, if you were a food addict or you didn't even know, but you think that you might be because you're eating a lot of processed foods and sugars and flours, what would one action be to start moving in the right direction? I would go to the grocery store. I would get a chicken, a bag of sweet potatoes, and a bag of carrots, and some nice olive oil. And I would just eat that for as long as I could stand it. That was a, a simple thing to do. That's just a start. But it would get me through the first two days of withdrawal. And there is a withdrawal. There is a withdrawal. Yeah. What about, you know, we, we in America, especially in Houston, we go out to eat a lot. Mm -hmm. What advice do you people, okay, before you go out to eat, this is what you got to do. Prepare ahead of time. What do you do? Before you go out to eat, definitely call the restaurant and decide what you're going to eat before you get there. Do not look at the menu because all of those choices are designed to make you crave mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and create confusion and mm -hmm. get you all excited about Especially food. Especially the bread, when they put that bread oh, out there yes. with the oil. I know, yes. I tell them no, no bread. Or tortilla chips. Right, yes, yes. the worst. Or yeah. anything like that. Right. that is, th there is research showing that if you eat a, a, a processed ingredient before a meal, you eat more. Of course. We, we, they used to put out raw vegetables. Yes. At, in the 1950s, yes. a long time yeah. ago. That was, that was before we were born. And now we know that those raw <laughs> vegetables actually slow down your appetite and you would eat less. Exactly. That's why you don't see them anymore. You don't see them anymore. Yeah. So what is it in the processing that, that we need to know? What, what, what's wrong with the processing of food? There really there are two things that are wrong. One is the processing itself. The processing techniques for processed foods are the same as the processing techniques for recreational drugs. Mm. It's extraction, it's concentration, it's, uh, you know, add, and then adding them together in these combinations. So it's taking the fiber out and then it's powdering it or crystallizing it so that it's absorbed very quickly and you get that high. So um, that's the same, <laughs> that's exactly what they do for recreational drugs, so there's all that. And now there are food additives there are now 10,000 food additives in use, and they are combined by the food industry to suppress satiation in the brain, for example. So they want you not to be able to experience restraint. And a lot of these foods collapse right in the mouth, so they're absorbed by the membranes in the mouth. They don't even go through a digestive process. That's drugs. Yeah, it's yeah. like a drug. Yeah. Now, best advice for the people who cook at home, Yes. And the people who don't cook at home. So the best advice for people who cook at home is to keep it simple and not to buy anything with a label. Okay. So it is so easy to put sweet potatoes in the oven. And put I love sweet potatoes. Yes. I love them. 
put your butternut squash and your spaghetti squash in there at the same time and, and make four or five days of starch. It's very easy to put a chicken in there as well, or a turkey breast, or, you know, bake a meatloaf. Uh, but, but make a lot at one time and, um, and then eat it at home. Right. Yeah. Now, if you're not the cooking type, what should you do? You should look for the little um, ethnic restaurants. Okay. Where Mama is still in the kitchen right. and she's got a pot of something fantastic. And she didn't put any addictive ingredients in there. And that you can trust, I think. Okay. And, and, you, and then see how you feel afterwards. Make sure you feel okay. For people who fail, I'm included, at weight loss, what should they know about weight loss and why it's so difficult? Uh, first of all, they have to know that the problem is in the brain. Okay. And if you stabilize the brain and you repair the brain, uh, the weight loss will take care of itself. So it's all in the brain. You've got to start with the brain. You have to desensitize the brain to craving cues, craving reminders, and then you have to deliberately reestablish the, the cognitive functions, learning memory, decision making, and restraint. That's very interesting because I've always felt that the, the issue with weight loss a lot of it has to do with how you handle it emotionally. Well, and if you're yes. addicted, you can't handle it emotionally. Strong emotions do trigger cravings, and they are a leading cause of relapse. So, you know, that's what programs like the 12-step programs, and I even, I have a program in my Facebook group called mm -hmm. The Four Walls, mm -hmm. and one of those walls is trigger avoidance. So if you know you're going to a family event, you write down a story of how you're going to be when you're there. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to uh, tell somebody that I love them and I can't talk to them right now. You right, know? right. All these uh, trigger avoidance strategies and, and just the awareness to say, okay, I could be very happy. That could trigger a craving. I could be very sad. So I can go to the funeral, but I cannot go to the house afterwards because right. I know what will be there. Right. Or I can go to the funeral and I can go to the house if I write a story about my behavior there and I stay in the living room and all the bad food is in the dining room. Right. So cue avoidance, trigger avoidance is, I think, very the missing started. link. It all started there. In, so it's um, like... In and then you know, uh, and I, don't I, I just don't think it's given the, enough US accepts attention. attention. They just show you change your diet, but you don't all deal the with all the emotions. It's like it's around around six or something. And you have yeah, a Facebook page. Tell me about that. Food so addiction much, right? education. And I'm so excited yeah, about this. But this we, have we have such. Uh, um, so what we do racist. in that page, there are files. There are eight files in there. There's a fifth There's a list of foods to eat and a list of foods not to eat. There's a trigger inventory. So you can say, okay, look, wow, I'm going to be exposed to three triggers today. I need to get ahead of that. Right. So there is very, very concrete advice there. There is what to do. And the cool thing about Facebook, and it's on your phone, is that this is a disease that can be er er activated at any time. Mm -hmm. So if you have your phone with you, you can get right into your phone and you say, you know, I'm in the grocery store and I really want to eat XYZ. And then 15 people from around the world will say, no, you know, don't. yeah, run. Oh. <laughs> and it seems to work, right? Yeah. It's like an app, a protective yes. app. Yes, it's now, amazing. Now, um, one of the things that's important, too, you're, you're talking about planning ahead. And, you know, there, there is something to say about the environment that you live in. Like, you know, if, can you actually... If you're a food addict, can you actually live around processed foods? No, right? It's Yes, you have to. You have to be able to do that. So there's a process by which, by which you desensitize yourself to craving cues. And you, like you have a picture of a food that triggers you, and you put a, a poison sticker on the front. Or you write a story about, that gives me diabetes and depression, and I'm not going to eat it anymore. And you say that, and it gives me diabetes and depression. It gives me, di and you say it over and over and over to yourself. And the next time you see it, no reaction. All right. Well, Joan Eflin, thank you so much for the work that you do in thank keeping you, us Patty. healthy. Yes. And uh, now you know what to do. Join us next week when we talk to Dr. Sophia Baunu about the misconceptions of the refugee crisis.